You guys have probably been curious of how I go along with making my videos. So I'm just gonna show you my process of video production by actually making a video and documenting it. This is for 1.5 thousand subscribers, so thank you guys so much. And before I make any video, I need to have an idea of what video to make. I'm going to make a new tutorial video for the Hyperpad 101 series. I want to make a basic tutorial for beginners because there is a lot of new Hyperpad users and the Hyperpad YouTube channel is growing pretty steadily now. I am going to review the three physics modes in Hyperpad. Simple concept I know, but it's mainly for starters who are just beginning to use Hyperpad. Now that I have my idea, I need to record the footage for the video. But I can't just randomly record stuff and then expect to put together a video with some voiceover. So I go to the notes app and then write the script of the entire video. <laughs> I write everything that I want to say. And no, the script doesn't have to be professional looking, it can literally just be like a whole essay. And then I just read over it, and sometimes it'd be like that. Sometimes I add side notes so that when I edit the final product, I know what to do. It can take an hour or two just to flesh out a script that's around 5 minutes. Oh my god! I know, it sounds slow and time consuming, but I like to be very thorough with what I say and I want to entertain the viewers while I'm at it. If you watch my videos or my tutorials, you would know what I'm talking about. You know I go cray cray. You know what that's me? Stop this madness. And yeah, I'm kinda immature, so I like to add cheesy jokes here and there. But that only makes the tutorial a little more enjoyable to watch. Chicken butt. I revise my scripts at least twice to make sure that everything that I'm saying sounds right. Usually I will work on the same script at different times of the day so that each time that I worked on it, I was clear minded. If I was confused at any point of the script while reading it, then I will have to revise it. And yes, I treat it like it's a writing essay, don't judge me. Oh sh! there's a typo! And after a while, now that I have my script, it's time to record! <laughs> now, this is going to sound weird, but I actually record the voiceovers first before I actually record the footage. I found out that doing this is actually much easier for me because I'm not forced to be constrained to the footage that I just recorded. So I can say anything and make it happen. Uh, this video is gonna get a million views. Hold up! I record the voiceovers on my MacBook, not on my iPad. And that's because the microphone that I have is only compatible with the MacBook. Small caveat, but I can get over it. And I record with this microphone because it's really high quality and recording it in FL Studio or any other app in the iPad kinda sucks. This is what my voice sounds like when I record in FL Studio. No filters, no effects. I sound like trash. And this is what my voice sounds like when I use this microphone. Sexy. I record bit by bit, reading the script as I go, and yeah, sometimes I improvise, but I try not to go too far from the script. This is what actors do? Man, that must be a fun job. After around 30 minutes of recording and editing, I finally got all the voiceovers that I need. So I export it as an audio file, preferably as an mp3 since it takes the least amount of storage. And then, cool, I have my audio file, what's next? I send it over to my iPad and open the audio file on FL Studio Mobile. So what am I doing now? I make some final adjustments to the voiceover. I add a compressor throughout the entire audio so that the quiet parts are louder and that the louder parts are quieter. The volume throughout the whole track should be relatively at the same level. If you guys have watched my tutorials, you know that I like to add sound effects and apply filters on my voice. I like to do weird stuff when it comes to auditory experience. 
So I have separate tracks for adding reverb or making my voice lower, and I can adjust the intensity of these effects using automation. And I also add a bunch of sound effects throughout the entire recording. All the sound effects you hear are actually placed here with FL Studio Mobile, not the editing software that I edit the videos with, which I also do on my iPad. There are three different physics modes that an object can have in Hyperpad. They control how an object can interact with another object by physical means. So, around two hours later, after all of that, I would export the audio file as an mp3 and import it to the software that I'm going to edit the video with, which is on my iPad, again. Yeah, this whole process literally takes place on my iPad, the only thing that I have to do outside of my iPad is recording my voice, which is on my MacBook. Cool. Back to editing. I use Perfect Video to edit my videos, which is a free app in the App Store. But to unlock all the features, you will need to pay for the Pro version. Bruh. So I have the audio file and a blank project in this app. I'm going to put a placeholder video that is going to be completely blank and I will extend it to be long enough to cover the whole entire voiceover. Then add the voiceover yada yada. I have to make sure that the aspect ratio is 16 to 9 and that it's rendering at 60 frames per second. If the video is not following the setting, then viewers will not watch it because they think the video is low quality or something, which is definitely not true. But hey, I have to do it because it makes my videos look good. <laughs> now that I have that, I export the video and then place the video in a new project with the same 16 to 9 aspect ratio and 60 frames per second render setting. There are three different physics modes that an object can have in Hyperpad. Cool, now I'm going to erase the background of this video so that I can add backgrounds to it later on. And then I split the video into sections, into tons and tons of sections. On average, each minute of video will be split into 5 to 10 separate shots. Each shot can range to 5 to 20 seconds long. I split the video when I'm done talking about something, when I move into a different topic, or after some sentences. Each shot would have a different background and lots of edits thrown into them. So I'll work from the first shot to the last, add in subtitles, images, and videos. The main reason why I like to do voiceovers before I actually film video is because I can line up the subtitles and images on the screen to be in sync with my voice, so everything flows cohesively. Now that I have my script and a voiceover, it's time to record some footage. I listen to the voiceover and that will tell me what I will need to record or do. I'm following my own tutorial, doing every step and recording it. I purposely go slow as I can and emphasize what I need so that it's obvious to the viewers watching. If I go too slow, I can always chop it up or speed it up in editing. But for this case, I just want to illustrate some ideas. After all, this is really not a tutorial, but more of a review. So I make a new project and polish some scenes for show. I created simple scenes for the tutorial showcasing all the physics modes and showing how each of them work. I go back to the video editor, edit in the video I just recorded, and move on. This repeats until I finish editing the entire video. I add in the background, images, text, and animate them using keyframes, editing stuff, yeah. I like to style my videos in a particular way, adding black rough outlines to images that show on the screen, and using a palette of colors that follow the Hyperpad branding guidelines. There are three different physics modes that an object can have in Hyperpad. They control how an object can interact with another object by physical means. <laughs> in Hyperpad.
And yeah, after around two days later, I finished the last shot of the video and added the outro to the end. I actually have a project saved for this app with the template of the outro so I can use it at the end of every single video that I make for this. I just changed this to the previous video that we have, which was the login API usage tutorial. Export the video, add it to the end, and then add in the music and boom, rough draft. Yeah, only rough draft, guys. I watched the entire video to see what I can add to it. This is where I put in memes and stuff and some extras. Uh, and after some adjustments, I export the video in 4K. Awesome! Got the video. Now, normally I would upload this straight to my YouTube channel, but this is a video for a tutorial series on the HyperPad YouTube channel. So I upload it to Google Drive and send it to our marketing coordinator, Clarissa, to upload and publish the video on the HyperPad YouTube channel. After around a week, the video will be up and ready to be consumed by everyone. Woo! And that's how I make my videos. I would go to my tutorial videos, then get feedback and suggestions for upcoming tutorial videos. I get notifications when someone comments on my videos or mentions me and I always respond. At least if the comment has been blocked or deleted by YouTube. That happens. Oh yeah, and about the thumbnails, the description and everything else, I actually use my own app to do this. So um, go ahead and check it out. I make my thumbnails on there and I use it to get tags that I need for my videos. So yeah. That's all for this video. I'm reading this from the script that I have written for this video and you're probably seeing the script on the screen right now. Yeah. Well, um, thank you for 1.5 thousand subscribers and thanks for watching. Bye! <laughs>